Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our last but not least um, regular uh, Pitt County Board of Commissioners meeting for December 9th, 19th, 2022. Um, Madam Clerk, call the meeting to order. Everyone is present except for Chairwoman Perkins Williams. Do we need a motion to excuse? Yes. Um, do we have a motion to excuse? Motion to excuse. Sorry. Second it. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, now I would like to have an invocation offered by Commissioner Ann Floyd Huggins. Lord, we thank you for this day. We ask you that we thank you for all that are present here, and we ask your blessings on this meeting. In Jesus' name, say amen. 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 We're not going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. We are. Thank you. Actually, um, thank you, Commissioner Colson. We have a little bit of a different approach um, offered by our Chair Mary Perkins Williams. Um, she has requested that a member of our Pitt County. Um, high school and middle school community um, come and lead our commission in the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'd like to um, offer our welcome to Elliot Williams. Um, Mr. Williams, if you'll come approach the podium and lead us in the pledge. I pledge of allegiance to our flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Williams. I'd like to move to approval of the agenda. Before we do so, I believe that the um, our county manager would like to offer some um, some requested changes to our agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There are two requested revisions to your agenda this evening. One is item for consent 1013, the opioid expenditure agreement with Pitt Community College for the reentry program. You have a revised agreement at your seat. I'd ask that you swap that with the item for consent in your notebook when you consider items for, for consent this evening. And secondly is public hearing eight number one, which is Sawyer's Property Management Group LLC conditional district rezoning. At 4 o'clock this afternoon, the county office has received a withdrawal request from Sawyer Property Management requesting that the application for rezoning be withdrawn. They state that um, they would like to officially withdraw the request to rezone Pitt County tax parcel numbers 65951 and 84426, case REZ 22-06, scheduled for the December 19th, 2022 meeting of the Pitt County Commissioners. They state that they understand that the request to withdraw is a complete termination of the zoning rezoning request and that any modifications to the existing zoning of the property will require a new application, a new fee, and will restart the zoning rezoning process. Um, given that, I'd ask that you um, remove that hearing from your agenda and to avoid any confusion it will not be continued to a future date certain the process is terminated and would have to restart from anew um, thank you madam manager do we have a motion, motion. 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 second we have a motion and second madam clerk Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. And now it looks like we will move to um, public addresses to the board. Um, we did have a significant item removed from the agenda. But just to be clear, anyone that did sign up to speak is more than welcome to do so this evening regardless. And we have a number of members signed up to speak. Um, and we will start with uh, the top. We've got Jerry McRoy. 
And with the removal, if you prefer not to speak, you may withdraw. If you wish to proceed, you may. And the, the county attorney would read the statement. Yes. Pitt, Co Pitt County welcomes comments on all matters of public concern. Please state your name and address prior to begin, beginning your remarks. Pursuant to the board's rules of procedure, I will keep your time at three minutes per speaker. <coughs> Thank you for allowing me to use three minutes of your time to speak to you tonight. Mark and Benji, welcome to the Pitt County Board of Commissioners. Thank you. Good to have you guys. I hope you will always listen to the people, not just the corporate interests or LLCs or paid consultants, but the people. On the evening of November 16th, I was here to speak to the Pitt County Planning Board in opposition of the rezoning request by Sawyer's Project Property Management Group, LLC, which I understand was pulled for now. Their operation known as Sawyer's Fun Park was and is, or was, pursuing a further expansion of their operations on Corey Road. I live on Corey Road. I am the first house in Corey Ridge subdivision, a subdivision which long preceded Sawyer's Fun Park. Just to be absolutely clear, the planning board headed by Mr. Eric Gooby found Sawyer's rezoning request incompatible with their surrounding residential properties. I 100% concur with the board's recommendation. I truly hope Sawyer's business interests will not override the concerns of local residential neighbors now or in the future. In cases just as, such as this, remember commissioners, the little guy counts too. Commissioners, ask yourselves, Sawyer's Fun Park, fun for who? Not the residents in the local neighborhoods who value their tranquility and are already subjected to Sawyer's outside summer concerts, which is against ordinances, I understand. Not the young school children who may be diligently working on homework or school projects and need peace and quiet to concentrate. Not the people traveling down Corey Road who must contend with the heavy flow of traffic, which would surely increase. <coughs> And certainly not for the two families that live directly in front of the Sawyer's operation who are here with us tonight. I feel sorry for them most of all. When purchasing their property and building their family homes, they cannot foresee a boisterous, scaled-down theme park right at their back doors. Sawyer's last expansion already shatters the quiet of our evenings with loud music from their outdoor patio area. The current outdoor lighting of Sawyer's simply adds to the already intrusive lights from H. Boyd Lee Park on the other side of Sawyer's operation. In this case, more is certainly not better. The original decision to allow intrusive commercial operations so near peaceful residential neighborhoods shows very poor judgment on the part of the City of Greenville and Pitt County Board of Commissioners. Please don't exacerbate the poor judgment of that decision by doubling down with another terrible mistake. I humbly ask as a retired taxpaying resident that you don't make things even worse by approving Sawyer's request to reduce the buffer zone between their commercial operation and local residents. And I'd like to wish you all and your families a very Merry Christmas. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We have Mike Kerner. Thank you for your time. I'm Mike Kerner. I live at 968 Vingert. Um, I was here to talk about Sawyer's as well. Um, I just wanted to come up and kind of say, I'm going to say, keep it brief, but uh, myself and multiple of my neighbors will be here in six months or six years when he tries to do it again. We're all strongly against it. Um, I don't think any one in the neighborhood trusts that he has anybody's best interest besides himself, and we'll be here whenever that is. Um, so we will... Uh, Keep close tabs on it, and hopefully we don't have to see you again, but thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kerner. We have Caitlin Kerner. Hi. Thank you. My name is Caitlin Kerner. I live at 968 Van Gert Drive as well. Um, I, once again, was here to talk about Sawyer's and not trying to over um, do the topic, but it is a very big topic for all of us that live there and um, 
I guess the biggest thing is is that we really have no faith in the cooperation of Sawyers with our communities around him. He has blatantly broken many rules, um, but one of it is he's broken the faith of the communities around him by repeatedly making false statements of reaching out to us and doing stuff when I can say as I have an adjoining property to his property line and I have never spoke or heard from him or the Sawyer Management Group once um, throughout this entire process. And I even spoke at the last planning meeting. So he would have had my information down as a public speaker. And he still has never come and addressed the concerns we gave at the planning committee. So as we all said, we are here to continue the fight if he wishes to continue to do that. And thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Kerr. Difficult to read, but I have a Tiffany Dowell. Is that correct? Might have left. Might have left. Okay. Um, Mr. Carlos White. Mr. White. Luis McRoy. Louise McRoy, 1017 Van Gert Drive. I too am here speaking about Sawyer's Fun Park. Um, my, I will abbreviate what I was going to say since it has been changed. But I did want to cover a few items and let you know that we as neighbors are very concerned and we will keep coming back if he keeps coming back. He does not have our interests at, 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 his, at his best interest. Sawyer's Fun Park has demonstrated they do not respect their neighbors. They have demonstrated their lack of respect for the law. They have ignored the governor's orders. They ignored restrictions of no outside entertainment. What makes you think, or us think, that they will abide by any restrictions that get in their way? They haven't thus far. If, if it comes back and it gets approved, I shudder to think what laws they will ignore in order to line their pockets. Please don't be responsible, if it comes back up, to destroying Corey Road. On this morning's Henry Hinton show, Mr. Sawyer said there were about three neighbors against the rezoning and that he hoped that the county commissioners did the right thing and approved it. Mr. Sawyer made a false statement and he knows it. At the planning board, there were six people who spoke, eight letters sent, let alone the number of residents that were here in attendance. In today's Daily Reflector, he says he wants to postpone the rezoning request tonight. He wants to set up some meetings with neighbors to hear their concerns and satisfy their concerns. That's the main reason. If this was true, he has had ample time to do so. I haven't heard anything from Sawyer's. It would appear Mr. Sawyer is using the media to influence your votes. Um, I've got other things to say, but I will just leave it at that for you to think about in case this does come back up. Like I said, we will be back. We will be fighting for our right to have quiet homes and enjoyment. And I would also like to thank every one of you for listening to me and wish each and one of you a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Elizabeth Hodges. Good evening. So I know I'd emailed a lot of you already today, so and I'm just kind of at a shock. Um, my home, I'm not going to read my whole thing exactly, but my home is one of the two that would have been sandwiched by this proposal. We live literally on Quarry Road, the entrance right beside the um, cheerleading school. Myself, my husband, and my beautiful six-year-old daughter. Um, I can kind of just reiterate exactly what my neighbors have said. Um, Mr. Sawyer has never come to my home, and I live right beside him. Um, he has never tried to make any kind of connection with us, um, try to fix any issues we've had. We've had to call the sheriff's office numerous times, which are documented. Um, it is kind of sad when we can't even sit in our own home and watch a football game or a TV show without hearing the obnoxious music in the backyard, and my house will literally shake. I mean, shake. Um, when I have a six-year-old that's in kindergarten and I'm struggling to get her to, in bed at night, it's, it's bad. And so just so much has happened behind the scenes. Um, and it, it's just been tough on all of us that we feel like we haven't had a voice. 
but I really, really want to take a minute to thank the planning board. Um, he, they have done a great job. Mr. Eric has always been approachable to me. I want to thank you guys just for allowing us to talk. Um, and I'm glad that um, I don't have to go over everything I was going to say, um, but just know that we will keep coming back. I call the sheriff's office because stuff has to be okay. Like we need to live in a safe community and right now there's issues that um, need to be addressed. So thank you guys for this and um, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, do we have anyone else in the audience that was not signed up to speak that would like to address the board? Okay, so. <coughs> Sir, if you'll approach, or ma'am, if you'll approach and state your name and address for the record. I signed a little piece of paper, but y'all might not have gotten it because we were kind of like coming in. Okay. Anyway, uh, my name is Mary Lou Stewart. We live in the little brick house right in front of Sawyer's Fun Park. We have spoken to TJ. Our son-in-law knew him very well from church. Um, but anyway, when we spoke to him, we were concerned about the Sawyer's Fun Park being put in. He promised us there would not be a road put beside our house. There is a road beside our house with street lights that come on every evening, shine, shine into my bedroom, our guest bedroom, and our sunroom. He had promised he wouldn't do that. He, he broke his word. When he put the outdoor patio in, the speakers are directed towards our house and Elizabeth's house, who lives beside us. They are not directed towards the back, towards the open field and the woods. My son works in sound and light in Charlotte, and he came to visit us. He walked by there and he said, that's ridiculous. Why did he put the speakers facing all the neighbors when they should have been turned facing the field? We asked him about it. He said, well, my architect or my designer said that this was the way it should work. It isn't. He does not keep his word and he does not tell us the truth when we talk to him. Those speakers are the biggest problem because they are facing our homes and, and the loudness is just ridiculous. He should turn them to face the back towards the field and the woods. And that's all we ask, basically. So that's our issue. And I thank you and I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas. And I'm glad I didn't fall down and faint because I'm not a public speaker. <laughs> you did a good job. Thank you. Do we have um, Glenn Stewart? Yes, sir. This is a copy of what I'm going to present. Um, I, uh, I feel like I would be, uh, uh, if I didn't speak, I would be in error uh, because I have I've spoken twice to uh, to Sawyer with, with my wife present, and one time I was there by myself, or two times I was there by myself. I'm Glenn Stewart. My wife and I, we live in front of Sawyer's Fun Park on Quarry Road. <clears throat> uh, we bought our house so we could, to a place to live until we died. Uh, and our house was built almost 20 years before Sawyer built his first building. My difficulty with Sawyer started about the time he became Sawyer's Fun Park. About that time, he built a road beside my house, a road that he had previously told us would never be built. Also on the north side of his building, he built a patio. This patio is a place where people can hang out and listen to music. Quite often there's a live band. He pointed the speakers to the back of our house. Times we could sit in our front room of our house and still hear Sawyer's music. The music he produced would go deep into Vicksburg based on the people that I talked to. <clears throat> the night of September the 1st, 2021 was a loud night at the fun park. I know quite a few people called a complaint to the sheriff the next day, I went to Sawyer and spoke with him eye to eye. He told me that, you know, he wasn't violating any noise ordinances because he turned his music off at 10 o'clock. In closing, I told him, I said, I, I respect your right to enjoy your property, and I ask that you respect my right to enjoy my property. Um, to those of you, well, we can just discontinue that. But uh, 
out of respect for homeowners in Quarry Ridge, Blackwood, Tall's Cove, Rosewood, Vicksburg, my neighbor and I, and also uh, people that live in neighborhoods like this, I encourage you to be very wise when you re make any rezoning that's close to residential areas. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that um, has signed up that we have not acknowledged or thought they may have signed up? I'd just like to give a copy to Jenna of why. Yes. Sure, that's fine. All right. With no one else, we'll um, close the public addresses to the board. Um, and if we could move to presentation of the employee month, um, Manager Gallagher. Yes, and if Devin Johnson would come forward. put you right on that black spot and I'll go on this side of you. Does that work? Okay. You want both of us in the, well, you stay on the spot and I'll go over here. Is that better? Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, I always enjoy this time of um, the month when we get to recognize our county employee of the month. This is rounding out um, our last one for this calendar year. I couldn't be more pleased to present this month's Employee of the Month certificate to Devin Johnson. Um, Devin was selected as being a valuable member of the 911 Communication Center. His nominator said he is an excellent team member that looks out for the best of the division. He goes above and beyond to help others using experience he's had from the military and from his advanced education. He's willing to sign up for shifts to work on his days off so the 911 center remains adequately staffed. And he's also assisted in the training of new employees and in developing the local training manual um, was what his nominator said. The other thing that I'll point out too about Devin, this is the first I've seen where more than one person nominated Devin for the same award. So um, this is an award where a peer nominates you and then a committee of peers selects and Devin had multiple peers nominate him for this award. So with that, we have a Certificate of Recognition for Employee of the Month, December 2022, presented to Devin Johnson, 911 Communications, in recognition of your dedication and exemplary service to Pitt County government and the citizens we serve with a $100 check as a token of our appreciation, if the Vice Chair would present that to you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. And then we'll get a picture. <laughs> me on the black dog. <laughs> Thank you so much. Appreciate everything you do. <coughs> Next we will move to our public hearings. Um, we have one remaining on the agenda. Um, we have public hearing for American Materials Company Conditional District Rezoning, a Zoning Ordinance Map Amendment. Um, Mr. Rhodes. Thank you, up. Mr. Vice Chair, members of the board. Good to be with you tonight. We do have one remaining rezoning request tonight. Uh, just as a recap, and especially for our two new commissioners, we typically with sand mines and this is a request for an extension to a sand mine typically we had been handling that as a conditional use uh, permit pretty much like a court of law people would be sworn in that has changed so tonight with this sand mine very similar to the one we dealt with a month or so ago this is handled as a uh, our typical rezoning request so people can come up at liberty and discuss whatever items, traffic, noise, whatever items a as they see fit. So that's just the preview for going into this rezoning tonight. Uh, this is a request by American Materials Company uh, to rezone 107 acres of property owned by Mr. Mitchum. 
and JK Properties. Several parcels are involved. I'll show you a map in just a minute. It is located adjacent to an existing site that I'll show you on the map also. This is near the Belvoir community off of Stokes Road and very near Old River Road. So the request is to go from rural agricultural to rural agricultural conditional district and it is expressly for the expansion of this existing sand mine. This sand mine's been in existence for quite a while, about 10 years. Uh, the first conditional use permit was issued by the board back in 2012, and that was for 235 acres. Not all of that is excavated, of course. Some of this area is just adjacent to the river. Some wetlands are involved, so uh, in turn, the excavation area is just a small portion of that, about 67 acres. The second conditional use permit was um, um, issued about two years ago, and that was for an additional 50 acres, of which about 17 were to be excavated. So tonight's request, additional 107 acres, about 37 acres to be uh, excavated. There are some areas that have already, uh, I'll say, before this permit has been issued, as well as the mining permit, have been excavated and um, what we're considering tonight will help bring this into compliance if it is approved. Um, that is pretty much stated in the second bullet. So the location, as I mentioned, um, your Belvoir community on the screen, if I can find the arrow, it's right here. So this is just to the south and west of there, right along the river, Falkland being on the opposite side of the river on NC-222. Map-wise, several parcels involved. You can see from the aerial photograph that's underneath some of the uh, coloring on the map, these are the excavated areas uh, that exist on site already. Um, these are the parcels where the excavation will move into. Stokes Road here, Old River Road here. Again, as far as some of the adjacent properties, you can see that the industrial use here for the mining operation, kind of in this gray color. The gold color, these are residential lots um, along Old River Road, as well as a little development right at the intersection of Old River and Stokes Road, as well as a few along Stokes Road. The land use plan does designate this area as agricultural open natural resource. A lot of this area is in the 100 year flood plain. Um, this is intended for agricultural, forestry, recreational open space uses that usually are associated with the 100 year flood plain. As far as our zoning, uh, as I said, this is already rural agricultural, but for the conditional district rezoning uh, for the sand mine, that's what's under consideration today. So uh, before they can uh, move forward with any additional excavation, they need to get this conditional district rezoning. So the rural agricultural area, as uh, denoted by our um, zoning ordinance uh, is to accommodate very low density residential uses. We typically don't promote uh, uses for residential purposes in the 100 year floodplain, um, but also a number of other uses that are allowed as well. This conditional district rezoning would allow for this one specific use and what is requested is the expansion of this existing sand mine. There are some other conditions that the uh, zoning ordinance already has in place for any mining operations. A minimum of 100 foot setback or separation from the edge of the pit to any of the uh, boundaries of the mine to the adjacent properties. Hours of operation really don't apply here. This is a sand mine. It's not a gravel or a quarry of sorts that would have any blasting. Screening is required per the ordinance, either with berms or a combination with some type of vegetation. Also, which is another large condition, is to ensure that there is a state mining permit that has been issued. So, 
looking specifically at the site plan, this is the two conditional use permits are shown on the area to the left on the screen. Uh, there are some other areas. They've moved into that 100 foot separation area in two spots, as well as an additional area here that has also been excavated that was outside of that area shown on the original plan and the uh, conditional use permit. The proposed additional area that they'll be, be moving into the south and west of that area. Um, this is the area to be excavated. This is pretty much the sand ridge. Some of the adjacent areas would be undisturbed. Those are lower lying and some of those actually have regulated wetlands involved. Planning staff do believe this is consistent with the land use plan um, and is appropriate for this particular area, especially as an, an extension to an existing operation. There's a significant amount of wooded and wetland areas to also serve as a buffer between that and some of the adjacent properties. We do believe that it is reasonable and in the public's best interest. And again, um, this area the access for this particular site is off NC-222, not Old River Road or the uh, Stokes Road, which would be closer to some of the residential uses. So again, all access is off of NC-222. Uh, the Planning Board reviewed this at their last meeting in November and recommended approval and that it was reasonable and in, pub in the public's interest. So those are your two motions. The first one, the consistency statement for your consideration, as well as the approval of the conditional district rezoning. With this comes along those conditions that uh, are part of the zoning ordinance and some additional ones, a 50 foot riparian buffer to go along with any of those blue line streams. Flood development permit will be required since this area is in the 100 year floodplain. And if any additional driveways, which we don't see that as a need, but if any are required, NCDOT will have to provide approval for that. With that, Mr. Vice Chair, we're ready for the public hearing. Okay. Um, go ahead and open the public hearing. Um, Madam Manager, do we have anyone signed up to speak? No one has signed up to speak. Okay. Do we have anyone present um, that would like to address the board regarding this matter at the public hearing? Okay, sir, if you'd approach the podium, introduce yourself and who you're affiliated with. Okay. I'll go ahead and read your same statement, Mr. Chair, if that's all right. Sure. Pitt County welcomes all comments on this proposed rezoning. Each person will be allowed up to three minutes to speak. Please state your name and address prior to speaking. My name is James Izell. I live at 310 Tiffany Circle in Garner, North Carolina. Um, I am actually a consultant for American Materials Company. I do their... Uh, permitting work and environmental uh, work and basically I'm here to answer any questions that you may have as far as the the permitting uh, the environmental permitting or the site design um, do we have any commissioners that have any questions for no. um, that I will I, I do have a question um, for our, our attorney and for um, mr. Rhodes um, saw from the slides that this was this property was currently out of compliance and it's brought before our board to bring it within the compliance is that correct this is I'll say twofold it is both for the expansion and with this request tonight it will also bring the site into compliance provided that the state mining permit also coincides with this and, and mr. attorney what is the regulatory regime in the event we have an applicant that applies out of compliance uh, so I mean this board can hear the application and approve it or deny it I would say that you know being out of compliance is something this board can take into consideration for whatever decision you'd like to make um, but as far as a, a true enforcement mechanism that first starts with a notice of violation and I don't believe that's been issued in this case so I don't know if that answers your question or not if you have any follow-up so if we if we voted to approve it they would be in compliance and then move forward without any without any fines or or I guess without any um, without anything happening as a result of the violation but if we denied it um, presumably there would be fines levied um, notice of um, deficiency would be brought and they'd be able to cure and then 
reapply for the I, expansion later after payment of fines? I would say to the to the first part, yes. If you approve it tonight, then they would be in compliance with no enforcement action. If you denied it, um, that would ultimately be up to James and Eric, who's the, the zoning administrator, administrator for whatever action they may like to take. I don't know if James would want to add to that or not. Well, we have been in contact with the state agency that regulates this. They're fully aware of it. They're also uh, looking at certain remedies on their side, but there, it really comes down to any board action tonight as to what type of action we may take. You mean what they do will be determined by the action we take? Is that what you're saying? One more time. Okay. I'm not sure who they it are, is or, but um, that they would, what we decide will determine the direction they're going to take? No. Okay. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm saying is the state is also involved with this. They're looking at it. What I meant to say was any action that we take, we, uh -huh. planning staff, is contingent upon what happens tonight. Oh, okay. This and we will staff. also share that with the state. I thought we were the we, part of the we, so, okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay. And do we have a, uh, do we have anyone else open to spoke? If, if not, I would like to close the, um, close the public session. Close the hearing, do we have comments? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, ben, um, I was pleased to hear that it's, uh, it's not close to any neighboring uh, residents. Uh, but uh, to the gentleman that came up, <coughs> would this, uh, how, how much could this be expanded that it might infringe upon? Because it looks like, according to the map, it's, it's, it's not. It's somewhat closer, it's getting closer to, to, to the neighboring uh, resident. Uh, uh, are you planning to expand this any more? Uh, would this be it or what? Um, the, 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 uh, the area that's shown to be mined is really the only sand that's, uh, the only de it's defined, the deposit is defined by, that's the maximum amount. Uh, outside of that, uh, there are jurisdictional wetlands that we can't go across and also the quality of the sand decreases. So that's the ultimate limits of, of the deposit. Um, the, if, if I could say a couple other things, uh, part of the area that was mined without the county's approval was somewhat of a misunderstanding on American Materials part. It was on a piece of property that was approved in 2020 but that particular mining area was not shown on that. So there was a misunderstanding with American Materials. They assumed that if the property was approved, they could mine that 17 acres or whatever, or no, I think it was two acres. But anyway, it was a misunderstanding as far as that goes. Um, another issue is, or just to let you know, the mining, the state mining permit has been approved and it's, it's finalized and, and this is the last step. If you approve, then it's, it, there's that, that would be the final approval as far as that goes. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is uh, this deposit is very shallow and they will probably be in and out of there in less than a year. This is a very quick, quick area they'll be in and out of. Do we have any other further follow-up comments from the commissioners? Um, Mr. Rhodes. Would you confirm that the violation was um, unintentional, in, in your opinion? I cannot weigh in on that. Okay. I do not know. Okay. okay. Mr. Chair. What's that got to do with it? Uh, I think we ought to accept the company's mea culpa, and I motion to make a motion to approve. I'll, I'll, I second I'll, it. I will, um, just as a matter of procedure, I'll go ahead and close the, close the public hearing, and then um, I thought you Commissioner Coles. Not, not I'm quite. sorry. I thought you had already done that. So we have a motion. Mr. Chair, could I speak just briefly? And I know often when the county attorney speaks, y'all think that I'm telling you you can't do something or, or should do something. I'm really not. Um, there is, this is a conditional rezoning. Um, and sometimes we have, which means that the applicant and all landowners need to sign a, a piece of writing saying they consent to all the conditions. I don't believe we have that to date. It's not in the packet before me. So what I would suggest is that 
whatever action you take tonight be conditioned upon their, them all executing a signed document within 15 or 30 days um, to, to satisfy that issue. So amend my motion. Okay, do we have a second? I Is second it? as amended. We have a motion and a second. We have the vote. Thank you. All right. Um, we move to our items for report. Uh, Mr. Hill. November 2022 20, tax collection report. Good evening, uh, Vice Chairman Nunley, Commissioners, Madam Manager. Uh, this afternoon, I bring to you the November 2020, 2022 tax collection report. The Pitt County fiscal year to date, January 1, 2022 through November 30th, 2022, combined collection rate for real and personal property is 68.69%. The combined rate one year ago for real and personal property was 73.27%. Um, we believe, after reviewing some accounts, there are two main factors contributing to the lower collection rate this year. Uh, the first one is, we had some taxpayers that chose not to pay early, earlier in the year, um, possibly due to better earnings for interest rates in their accounts. Um, they didn't take advantage by the discount period. And the other one is we continue to add additional tax revenue through our compliance programs that we monitor and, and do throughout the year. Um, but Pitt County Tax Administration continues to pursue all outstanding taxes using the necessary remedies available through the North Carolina General Statutes. Um, and this is my recommendation that the board approve the November 22 tax collection report as presented. And do we have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Thank you. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Next, we'll move to our monthly financial report. Uh, Mr. Kroom. Good evening. It's good to be with y'all tonight. Tonight I bring you the November um, 2022 finance report for the general solid waste and EMS funds. We are five months into the fiscal year, or 41.7% of the year. For the general fund, we have collected 48.7% of anticipated revenues and spent 38.5% of budgeted expenditures. For solid waste, we have collected 64.2% and spent 37.8. EMS, we have collected 46.2% and spent 44.1%. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to, to um, answer them. If not, it's my recommendation that you approve the report as presented. Thank you, Mr. Green. Do we have a motion? I move for approval of the November monthly financial report. Second. We have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Kroon. Uh, next, we have our manager's report. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Your next meeting date is January 9th um, at uh, 6 p.m. in this room and February 6th at 6 p.m. in this room. Remember, for January, you only have one regular meeting that month. On the 23rd, you'll have your capital improvement workshop, um, which is item at E at 8.30 in the morning in this room um, in lieu of your second meeting. Wanted to remind um, you and the public that county government offices are closed for the holidays, December 23rd, 26th, and 27th, consistent with the state holiday schedule, that Friday, Monday, and Tuesday around Christmas, and then on January 2nd for the New Year's holiday. Um, also a reminder on January 6th that 8 a.m. is your Pitt County Legislative Breakfast with your state delegation um, to review your adopted legislative goals for the year ahead. And then for those new commissioners attending or those existing commissioners needing a refresher, um, the Essentials of County Government course along with mandatory ethics training is being offered in Cary on January 12th to 13th or online January 18th to 20th. Um, if you've signed up already, you've received confirmation from the clerk. If you'd like to sign up, please reach out to the clerk's office and she can handle that for you. Um, item F, I wanted to give you an update on a multimedia branding and recruitment campaign 
um, that we've been started, that we've been working along, along with Public Information Office. A new multimedia branding and recruitment campaign began on December 12th of this year featuring TV and radio commercials, digital marketing, and print ads in the Daily Reflector and in the Daily Drum newspapers. The campaign will run through mid-February ahead of our Litter Public Service Announcement campaign, which will um, begin then. We'll, uh, we have a 30-second commercial. The goal of this really is in our effort to um, attract, retain, and recruit the best and brightest individuals to Pitt County. Um, we've changed a little bit of the flavor. If you look on the Pitt County website, Employment Opportunities page, I hope you'll find a kinder, gentler, more inviting um, approach than we might have had in the past. And this video um, is consistent with that. If the Public Information Office will go ahead and play that 30 second um, video for you to see what we're doing. Pitt County is growing and Pitt County government is leading the way with inclusive programs and services that support the whole community. Our employees are leaders in the state, best in the East, and we want you to join our team. I'm Janice Gallagher, Pitt County Manager. Pitt County employees are our greatest asset. Please consider joining our diverse and talented team dedicated to excellence in public service, making a difference in our community every day. So we will run that in the hopes of attracting and retaining um, talent within Pitt County government. I saw that on channel eight. Uh, has it been on any other channels? Is it a commercial? Um, I, I am not sure. Public yeah. Information Office would know that, but okay. they, um, push it out there in all different media forums. Very good. Um, and reaching all sectors of our community, including the Daily Reflector and the Daily Drum. Good. Okay. The last thing I wanted to mention this evening um, was employee parking. Um, we've had some employees with concerns, and um, I've been working with department heads and a team to address downtown parking. You may have heard that January 1st, the city of Greenville <coughs> Um, is rolling out their new parking plan, which will, will require paid parking in all street and surface lots in the city of Greenville. Street parking um, has a maximum of three hours, the first hour free and then payment two hours after that. So that is not suitable or compatible um, with folks who are working an eight-hour day. So in order to address um, needs for our Pitt County employees downtown, the parking lot between the tax collector and the tax assessor's office has now been designated as employee only parking. That lot has 101 spaces, which will um, be sufficient for the tax collector, the tax assessor, economic development, um, and then we have also using that space the guardian ad litem office and juvenile justice, and then the sheriff's office, First Street. That will cover that. Um, and that will be employee only parking and not public parking um, for citizens who are visiting downtown Greenville or going to shop or um, uh, otherwise visit the city. Will they have any ID tag or something for that car? Yes, <coughs> we'll have signage and we will issue a paper permit that will go in each car and we will sign each space by number okay. um, so that everyone will have a spot and we'll be able to know who's parking where so that if a person who's not supposed to be in that lot is parked in there, they'll be easily identified. Um, and um, we will work with a company after a short educational period to tow the vehicles that are not supposed to be in there at the vehicle owner's expense. There's also a lot um, that's commonly referred to as the jury parking lot along Green Street. That has 112 spaces. Um, that lot will remain um, as is currently signed as a government of offices lot. So. Of those 112 spaces, the clerk of court will be able to utilize 58. The district attorney's office will be able to utilize 30. Jury and other court personnel um, can use that lot as it is currently labeled. There's also a lot with 26 spots that's owned by the county beside the public defender's office, and that will um, be retained for public defenders parking the way it's currently used. Um, you may see in the register of deeds office on First Street, that is not a public parking lot. That's for Register of Deeds staff and customers of the Register of Deeds office, which is free off-site parking. There are maybe additional spaces in there, and the um, county vehicles that we cannot fit in the 101 space lot at the tax office may overflow into the, that lot by permit. 
um, or with permission, I should say, not necessarily by permit. So I wanted to make you aware that we're aware of these issues. They're very concerning to our county employees, um, and we want you to know that we have addressed the issues for our employees. We do have within the Department of Social Services a good number of um, social workers who report to court um, for a full day, um, so they would not also have enough time to park on street, and we will reserve certain spots within that tax office lot for them as they carpool um, and share rides to and from those limited number of spaces. The county does not intend to purchase um, uh, monthly permits to park in the city of Greenville for our employees. Our own lots should take care of our own employees. The county is not intending to pay for people who choose, employees who may choose to park closer on the street to pay for parking because we'll have something available and the county is not intending to pay any parking tickets for our employees who may get them while they're in the city of Greenville as a result of their parking plan. So I wanted the board to be aware of how we have adapted to the situation. I believe we are meeting our needs with existing space. We are continuing to retain county space for courthouse personnel and the public um, in that jury lot. I've met with um, Sarah Beth Rhodes and Ann Wall um, to discuss parking. Um, when a, a large jury comes in and um, the city of Greenville has assured her that they will um, work with them on special occasions if there should be a capital murder trial or something like that that would require um, an unusually large number of um, vehicles to be coming in for jury service. Happy to take any other input um, on Nancy. the parking topic, otherwise I mean, we'll move forward. I have a question. Both of them. Um, what's the real reason why the city of Greenville wants to put paid parking downtown. I mean, you hear about they want to attract people to come down, spend their money, and do this, that, and other. What's the real reason behind it? Um, so this is counter counterintuitive. Yeah, so I don't want to speak for the city of Greenville. I can tell you in my You don't have to because the answer is obvious. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Um, uh, Madam Manager, I do have a question about off uh, business cycle parking on these facilities um, as whether or not we have a plan whether or not they will um, be only for county employees also on the weekends and the evenings or if we might want to explore any revenue generating options during those when we're not utilizing those spaces uh, for the county if that's something that's been considered um, it has not been considered because um, we haven't gotten that far but it certainly can be um, and we can look at that. The Greenville parking enforcement is 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, and so after that, there's no parking um, fees enforced by the city of Greenville um, Monday through Friday. Okay. And so um, other than that, parking would otherwise be free. Um, parking also all along First Street along the Town Common and Town Common Park is not part of their parking plan. That remains free for visitors to the park. I think that will also serve as overflow. But to the extent um, the county is not utilizing space and there seems to be a need for the public, we can certainly explore that further. That's all that I have. All right, thank you, Madam Manager. Uh, next, we'll move to the items uh, for consent. Motion to approve. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second, Madam Clerk. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, thank you very much. And it looks like we will move to our one item for decision. This is the appointment, reappointment to the Pitt County Board of Adjustment, uh, County Manager Gallagher. Yes, this is for the um, <clears throat> Pitt County Board of Adjustment. It is being suggested that you appoint Sharon Bray to a South of the River voting seat. Um, she is an alternate who is interested in being appointed to a permanent position. It is also recommended um, that you reappoint Johnny Pinner to serve another full term as a North of the River representative. And then in addition to that, there is a third seat that is open um, for someone to be appointed as another South of the River representative, alternate. Motion to approve, yes, sir. And you'll need a name for that South of the River alternate. We don't have to make that tonight, do we? Um, you don't. You can look through the applicants in your packet. Every applicant in your packet is eligible 
as a South of the River alternate. Um, you can choose from Jack Brock, Carl Chitman, Richard Pitt, Robert Shack, Mary Holdeman, Jackie Hinton, or those are your choices, or you can defer that to a later meeting. I nominate Jack um, Brock. Say that again. Who? Jack Brock. He's okay. on Animal Thank Service you. Board as well, I believe. Would you amend your motion to include Jack Brock yes. with the other yes. appointments? Yes, that's correct. Second. We have a motion and a second. Motion passes unanimously. All right. Um, we will next move to commissioner comments before we move to closed session. Um, start down with uh, Commissioner Colson. None. No comments. Everybody has a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Same thing here. No comment. I wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. No comment. Um, I would like to uh, wish members of our Jewish community a Happy Hanukkah. That uh, starts today. Um, and everyone else, a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Um, and now I would like to turn to um, our attorney. If you'll please read our, what we need to perhaps move into closed session. Absolutely. It has been suggested this body go into cl closed session under two grounds. First, to consider an economic development matter under General Statute 143. 318.11A4, and secondly, to consider information as confidential, uh, information confidential under General Statute 143, 318.10. And we have a motion. Set move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Unanimously. All right, and we're back. Um, do we have any motions? Board? Yes, I would like to make a motion to approve our closed session minutes from September 12th, 2022. Second. We have a motion and second. Quick. Motion passes unanimously. And um, we'll entertain any motions to adjourn. Adjourn. Second. Third. Motion is second. Motion passes unanimously. Good Thanks job, Mr. Thanks for having me.